Did you know that Paul Twitchell was a follower of the Church of Scientology for three years and that he actually reached the state of spiritual enlightenment or clear? Clear is the spiritual goal of all Scientologists where one has erased his active mind and is now totally alert and capable. Paul Twitchell even taught some of the followers of the church how to do astral projection, which Ron Hubbard himself had a hard time teaching. To understand both Scientology or Ekankar, you must understand the process of a cult. A cult is a spiritual movement or social movement led by a charismatic leader that tends to be authoritarian and demands to be revered as a godlike figure. In the case of Paul Twitchell, he proclaimed himself the Mahanta, the living egg master, and the embodiment of God. In the case of L. Ron Hubbard, he proclaimed that man has lost his identity and that he had a modern method to improve mental health through Dianetics, for which you need to pay at the time $500 per session. The second phase of the process is that the social movement has a form of indoctrination. With Ekankar, Paul Twitcher created the dogmas written in the Fruit of God, the Sharia Kisugmat, Book 1 and 2, Dialogues with the Master, the Far Country, and of course, the Wisdom Notes and the Initiation Letters. To implement the indoctrination, the Ekis has to go through 12 cycles of initiation. Write his or her dreams and thoughts to the master, or even share them through satsang with other members. The more you participate, and I mean participate mm -hmm. financially, the more initiated you will get. And if you question the word of the master or of the clergy, you may be excommunicated, like I was. In Scientology, the follower of the church has to go through excessive amount of auditing sessions where he or she has to confess his thoughts, dreams, and notions that are all video recorded for the amount of a thousand dollar per session or more. Scientology has 21 levels of initiation where the follower is required to spend $10,000 or more for levels of initiation. The Scientology authority is not to be challenged. If it is questioned, the follower may be subjected to re-indoctrination, meaning to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars again and be confined into false imprisonment at the Rehabilitation Project Force Camp. Finally, there is the exploitation phase. Ekankar is a less dangerous cult. The exploitation comes in form of volunteering for the egg I'm not aware if there are sexual or emotional abuses going on. However, to ensure that the religion authority or teachings are not challenged, Paul Twitchell, Darwin Gross, and now Howell Clamp have suggested that people who criticize Ekankar or who left Ekankar are detractors and are lost that those who leave the path of Ek 
are condemned to darkness and to never find a path to self-realization or to the submerged. Which is obviously bullshit. Echis are also suggested to not get involved in politics or any other subject, uh, any other debate besides a spiritual one to spread the message of Ek. In the case of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard suggested that anybody who doubts the teaching of Scientology are suppressive people. And even if those people are your own family members. You need to immediately disconnect with them, meaning to cease all forms of communication with them. Sea Org members who signed a billion year contract are not allowed to have children and are supposed to overwork on the boat for no pay. Sea Org members are also subject to slave labor for celebrities like Tom Cruise or Travolta with zero expectation of any form of remuneration. Obviously, Ekankar is the least aggressive and the least dangerous religion, but it's still a cult. Reza Aslan even points out in the Explain episode of Cults that the biggest joke in religious studies is that cult plus time equal religion. Therefore, you might as well consider that Christianity at the beginning was a cult. It actually was considered a cult by the Romans. Islam was considered a threat when the movement started in the Middle East. And if you don't consider killing civilization on your path, to create a Hebrew nation, a cult-like movement, I wouldn't even know how to call the Exodus in the Bible. Because the Hebrew had to kill their way to the land of milk and honey. Religion is dangerous, no matter the belief. And it doesn't have to be a spiritual movement. Maoism, Nazism, Leninism were all dangerous ideologies. As Reza Aslan put it again, the collective very sense of self is under attack by the world and the only way to salvage one's identity is to come together under the leadership of this charismatic authority and to rebuild from scratch, like communism, Nazism, or any form of sex. The reason of the video today is to reach out to those truly seeking the path of God or simply looking for spiritual enlightenment. You don't have to rely on any religion to reach that. You don't have to seek for a master. Whoever imposed himself as a master to you is a narcissistic fraud and a dangerous opportunist. When God created the first man and woman, he did not add a master and the mixture. God did not create us equal. Some of us are animals, plants, trees, and insects and our duty for those who realize that is to protect those who are not as advanced. You don't need to be a master to talk to God. You don't need a master to talk to God or to show you how to speak to your creator. That's bullshit. God has never stopped speaking to you. You simply don't listen. If you quiet down all the noise around you, such as your thought, your worries, your emotion, your questions, the people and objects around you, all that is left is God. 
not the Holy Spirit, but God. In fact, the Holy Spirit is the Word of God. Therefore, hearing it is hearing God. So the Sugma or God then choose to speak to me. I just chose to listen. There is nothing I can do or say to convince you that this is the truth. I'm way too sick and tired to debate about this. It's not that I am arrogant or cocky or blunt. No, I'm way too sick and tired. And you know why you can't see or hear God right now? Because you're foolish enough to look inside you for God. When all that is around you is God. All the multiverse is generated from God. Therefore, how an insignificant thing like you could possibly contain God from within yourself. Stop asking questions. Stop debating with your stupid arguments from the plagiarized materials of Paul Twitcher. Some of you bring arguments about Eck and Carr with Howard Clamp or New with Dwayne. I don't care. I don't want to care. I am tired and sick of them. If Paul Twitchell's work is plagiarism, what does it say about Eck and Carr or New? They are regurgitations of Darwin Gross' work, then of Howell Clint, then of Dwayne. By comparison, it's like Roman Catholicism gave birth to Protestantism, which gave birth to Adventism. I don't care. And henceforth, I am affirming what Milarepa said to me in the dream. You don't need a master to find God at all. Milarepa, when he converted to Buddhism, spent most of his time in the wilderness inside of a cave until he started having followers. Siddhartha Gautama found enlightenment under the Bodhi tree without the aid of a master. The prophet Muhammad found the revelation in a cave through the angel Gabriel. There was no master present there either. And finally, Rama who traveled through Skitia to India was enlightened by the spirit of light, Deva, Nahusha. None of them had a master. Milarepa had a master in the beginning, but it is in the solitude in the caves that he found God. Which reiterates my point. It is in solitude away from the noise and everything else that you two will find God. Thank you for listening.